Hooray for the summer holidays, the wind in our hair. Yes, your hair. Yeah, I like it. Sorry to mention it. We're on a mission to find the drink that speaks for modern Britain. And uncover Oz's true identity. Oh, You're not from rubbish. Ireland, are you? Shut You've up. Made it up. It's based on Auntie, postcards. Auntie, Auntie. <laughs> We've necked Northern Ale, Scottish whiskey, it's Irish stout. Hello, diddly doodly. And how very British, our caravanning holiday has turned into a disaster. So as the caravan is trying to steer itself because the wheel's so bloody broken. Now we've returned to England for... Let me guess, more beer? Oh, another one now, you oh. fathead! Not just any beer, James. We're going to sample exciting, exclusive, expensive, extreme beers. The sort of beer that will shift the universe from its very axis. Yes! Nurse, he's off again. While waiting for the caravan to be repaired, we're staying in this charming small hotel, with its hot water, clean sheets, etc. But strange to say, I'm rather missing the decrepit, clapped-out old heap. Talking of which... Beer tastes really good at breakfast. It's perfectly normal, by the way, James, to drink beer at breakfast. I mean, for hundreds and hundreds of years, it was, it was the, the done thing. Remember that water... God of caravans, please deliver us. Are you listening? Well, yes. I'm telling you quite interesting things here. No, I'm listening. Just to let you know where your caravan has arrived for you, sir. Oh, has it? Oh, I could have gone to the Bahamas. Of all the spaces in all the car parks in this town, they had to back it into this one. Flowers are still fresh, though. A man shouldn't be parted from his brewery for this long. James? Yes? What are you smiling about? Caravan. Guess what's in here? Maize ale. Smells like beer. Hmm. Tastes like beer. Come and try it. James, firstly, it looks like a sample you've just given. And I have things to do. I have brewing to do. You're just gonna we are in Burton-upon-Trent. With... This is the home of the greatest water for brewing the world has ever known. I am using it. I'm going to go. Can you pull the caravan out? No, I can't. I've Come got on. brewing to do. I'll Please. see you later. Come on, you miserable Irishman. Well, what I need to do is to pop into the hotel kitchen, borrow some water. Burton-upon-Trent water. The best. A big pan. Tea. And breakfast leftovers. Tea actually helps the fermentation. Oh, this is local rosemary from out of the garden. That goes in. Rosemary is fantastic. Nettles from the car park. Burton upon Trent. Oh, this is going to be good. These are the hops. I'm just going to whop them in. This is going to be good. Ah. Finally, so malt it is, but extract. Say, I would prefer to use just straight malted barley, but I haven't got time. We'll soon find out who the master brewer is. The one with the dry feet? Very funny. Let's get on with it. Burton-upon-Trent was once the most famous brewing town in the world and brewed a ridiculous amount of Britain's beer. Is that a beer fact? Yes, and there's one simple reason for this town's greatness. It's water. The waters in Burton are fantastically full of salts. Magnesium, calcium sulfate and mineral salts. What they do is uh, allow you to have a much more fierce fermentation, a much more vigorous fermentation and much more refreshing at the end, much more frothy, much more sparkling in the mouth. But Did the magnesium make it highly inflammable? Thank you very much. My mate Steve Wellington leads us into a scene of brewing dereliction. Burton's breweries are largely gone, and the great beers have disappeared with them, victims of the scourge of lager. These tanks have the expression of typical lager drinkers. Blank eyes and a gawping mouth. <laughs> no neck. <laughs> right, here we are. This is the Royal Ale Store, which is the repository for the excess beers that were produced over the last 150 years for the royal families. We used to send some of the bottles down to the palace to put in Christmas pudding as well. That stopped about 25 years ago. So the brewers made beers especially for the royal family but not for distribution? They were yes, just... that's correct, yeah, yeah. They were for special occasions like um, births, marriages, deaths, coronations. Is there an abdication beer? 
Um, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Steve is guardian of this handful of regal relics. These are the brown jewels. Was it really brewed by the Prince of Wales, or did he just stand there and go, mm, yes, while someone else did it? No, I, I, I guess he opened the valve. I mean, the, the, the oh, beers that we produce by the Queen, I mean, she pressed a button. That's not a big deal, I know. But the Queen apparently doesn't climb stairs or do other things, so... What does she say when she presses the button? Um, God bless this beer and... Well, she, did, she, no, she, didn't, she didn't actually say anything. She just sort of said, press the button. These are the very oldest ones. Um, have a look at the date on that. That's 1869. 1869? Yeah, so that's 139 years old. Wow. It's priceless, really. I mean, if you look here, we've got, what, about 40 bottles left, and that's all that's um, left in existence. Um, go on, then. Open one. I dare you. All right, OK. <laughs> Can we taste one, really? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> now, if you're going to be driving, I better not give you any more than that. Uh, maybe we can find someone else to drive. <laughs> this is 100 and... 139 years old. 139-year-old beer. So what did we do, three, two, one, down in one? Or... I should sip it. It's the oldest thing you've ever had to drink, remember? It's corked. <laughs> but just think of the history. You know, this is a year before the Franco-Prussian War. The siege of Paris, or Napoleon III, was wondering what to do to restore his popularity on the French throne in 1869. He thought, let's go and have a good old war. They, in, in, in Burton upon Trent, they thought, let's brew some decent beer. I well, know which I'd prefer to do. <clears throat> we can try. Thrilling, no? The history. It's horrible. What? <laughs> it's not horrible, James. It's history in a glass. That tastes like it was strained through. Magwitch's underpants. It's, it's, I mean, it's rotten beer in a glass. It's not rotten beer either. It, Don't I think, think of it as old. beer. Think of it as a wine. And see what you... Do you think it makes any difference if you think of it as a wine? Concentrating, taking it seriously. Possibly taking it seriously and, and not taking it seriously. being okay. a silly boy. Swirly, swirly, swirly. Closing my eyes, thinking about 139 years of history and all the things that have happened since this first was incarcerated in the bottle. As wine, it's still horrible. It tastes of the sort of rather dark, murky, stultifying image of a Victorian interior in an old artwork with a crying child in it. That's rather good, because I was going to say it tasted like the sort of gummy bits, the solid bits on the top of a bottle of tomato paste. You incurable romantic, you. Mm. I think I might be sick. What, too much knowledge? Yeah, that. I think you drank that rather fast, to be honest. We're drinking that amount of history that fast. I don't think Victorian Britain agrees with me. It's a bit like... Jerusalem artichoke soup. That's a terrible, terrible indictment of a glass of beer. I fear history is going to be repeating itself for the rest of the day. Seriously, Oz, that beer could have had anything in it. When was the Black Death again? Don't be daft, James. The alcohol would have killed any germs long ago. And it was 1347. And that's a bubonic beer fact. In my cellar, I've got a beer section. What if you die? What if I die? Yeah. Well, you'll probably come around and say, I've heard Oz is dead. Can I have his beer, please? I would assume you would make provision for me to enjoy your beer in the event of your untimely and regrettable demise. Well, uh, are you going to make provision for me to enjoy your, your Jaguars and Lamborghinis and Fiat Pandas? I may already have done so. Ah, well then that's exciting. I, I better do something about my... You won't, uh, you my... won't like what I've left. <laughs> <laughs> that evening, more of the famous Burton Water descends. And you thought this was a summer holiday? That means we're forced to stay indoors and make our own entertainment. I'd now like you to try what is, allegedly, the world's strongest beer at 25%. Five? 25%. Bloody hell. 
Do I have to? Yes. Come on. Will you share it? I may try it. I want to see what it does to you. It is six to seven times as strong as a typical pub draft beer. But here, oh, it hurts my nostrils, James. Is it dare food? Is it like pork scratchings and chicken fowl? Well, I just don't know how they make it. What does it taste like? It's very much a flavour of cough mixture, liquid malt, um, something like a a beef cube I uh, was crinkled onto it and mm -hmm. you try it try and keep it on camera it's difficult to believe that it's actually oh it smells very fortified winey yeah but sour sort of off fortified winey yeah it's all sticky and horrible that's disgusting and revolting it tastes better than it smells I just what do you think of the packaging and the way it's presented in the stylized miniature copper? How can you go into a That's what it is, it's a, it's a comedy beer. Look at it! <laughs> Have you got one with a... <laughs> <laughs> Next morning, we head for Northampton. I thought they made shoes there. They do make shoes, and Northampton is where I had my first ever job. As a... As an actor, as a singer. Oh, God. And I played the cobbler in Chu Chin Chow. I sit and cobble my slippers and shoes From rise of the sun to the set of the moon Cobble and cobble all night After driving many other people to drink, Oz eventually took to it himself. Anyway, why Northampton? I've taken you to taste the world's oldest beer. Yes. Today I'm going to take you to taste another beer, which is the most extreme of its kind. So what am I going to take you to taste? The world's newest beer. No. The world's rarest beer. Uh, no, because I probably wouldn't know where to find it. The world's fizziest beer. The world's coldest beer. No. 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 The world's worst beer. Ha <laughs> ha. No. The world's most expensive beer. Yes! Is the world's most is? expensive beer. We've come to the Carlsberg Brewery to try this exclusive beer. It's been flown in from Denmark specially for us and comes with its own security guard. He's called Thomas. Can we actually taste it? We can if we find the tasting room. But this brewery is one of the biggest in the country, so it's easier said than done. We're lost. Good. We're lost. We're lost. Great. How we go again? Nice and a warm for a moment. Ooh, yeah. sunshine. This is fine. To make it clear. Yeah. That is a... Uh... So, gentlemen, what I'm about to show you here is the most precious beer in the world. Wow. Carlsberg Jacobson Vintage. How precious? Around 210 pounds per bottle. 210 pounds? Yeah. 350 pounds per pint. 350 pounds a pint? Yeah. The most expensive bottle, probably, hey. in the world. Why is it so expensive? The ingredients going into this beer um, is uh, three different types of molds, four different types of hops, especially this one. As you can read on the back side here, James, the bottle itself is worth uh, 50 pounds, the empty bottle. What, you take it back to the off-sales and they give you 50 quid? No. Due to the fact that this label is made by a famous Danish artist, it's supposed to look like um, Sif. Sif was uh, the wife of Thor in the oh, Nordic yes. mythology. James, James, don't, don't oh, try and take the label off. Even given all that, it's still quite expensive. You have to remember, this beer is handcrafted all the way through. I'm a, I'm a brewer myself. I still have to bottle it by hand and do the whole process mm -hmm. by hand, but I don't feel I can charge. So you want to taste this, see if I can convince you? Yes. 
This is a Danish designer Viking beer. It can only speak for Britain on one condition. Would it go well with a curry? No. I just want to practice a few of my Oz Clark hand gestures for tasting things which are... Did I miss any out? As far as I can make out, that means that you haven't shaved this morning and where's the shaving cream? Let's it begin may... with a smell. And it's good to keep it a distance from your nose at the start. Yeah. But since I caught consumption from the caravan, my super nose has been letting me down slightly. Is that why you're leaning to one side? Yeah, because I'm trying to see if it's different see in each nostril. Any bits yeah. that are still working. James, you're mm. wearing my patience down. Mm. Brown sugar, toffee, roasted aubergines, and new shoes. You see, you could well be right. Yes, definitely new shoes. I can never really tell good with you shoes. whether you're just picking ideas out of the sky. No, of course I'm not. The slightly, slightly burnt bit you know on what? the fried aubergines. It tastes like really nice, expensive beer. It is very good. It's still quite expensive, to be brutally frank. Is it, is it worth it, Oz? You know about expensive things. I don't think I can, I can say it's worth it, because um, I'm not sure that I've ever thought of a bottle of beer being worth that. A beer, to me, has somehow only ever been the drink of the people. Not are, necessarily. Not no. necessarily. In the no. southern parts of Europe, wine's the drink of the people, and beer is the smart drink. No, that's not wrong, is it? It's a beer. It's to be enjoyed. And small sips. Oh, is it? But what that means is, despite everything we've talked about, its flavour is a beer, which I do like. I think it's very, very nice and very strong. It's given me a bit of a, a bit of a hit, especially as I've got consumption. So I'm, you know, I'm quite susceptible to these sort of things. But all of that beer stuff we've been talking about is actually secondary to what this means as a collectible item for, you know, slightly nerdy enthusiasts. And you know, are we are we interested in beer here or in memorabilia? That beer works out at 30 quid a mouthful. I could have a great night out for that, and enough left for a fish supper. We need to get back down to earth. Well, how about, oh, I don't know, Stourbridge? Good idea. I'm in drinking mood, James, what about you? Yes, I've got one I'm... more treat for you. What's that? I'm taking you to the pub. Is it a proper pub? It's a very proper pub. Not only a proper pub, it's got a brewery attached to it. This guy's great-grandfather used to have a brewery here called Sadler's Brewery, and all these years later, he started it again. So have you so arranged for me to do tonight, some pretend work in a brewery? One. Nope, I'm real like work. Tonight, we're going to be barman. Ah, oh, I can do that. I did learn something as a student. This is Chris. Nice to meet you. Chris. I'm Chris. This is James. This is his place. Well, they do I follow us through the farm? I'll show you yes. how to do it. How's that for? Well, you have a, a, an enthusiastic but marginally dim-witted Neophyte here. It's a good start. I mean, I am a brewer, but I haven't worked in a pub for probably 20, 25 years. Can you do this? Uh, I use that, so yeah. Well, it's a good start. Let me show you the room. Give it a bash. Follow us through, we'll uh, see what we can do. Are you going to tell everyone you were a brewer? I mean, everywhere we go, am I going to have this? I'm a brewer thing. No, no, all right then, but honestly. Uh, well, the beers run from uh, the weakest at 3.8 this same to a whopping 6.6 .6 stouts. We've got uh, Thin Ice, our best seller, which is 4.5%, really, really zesty, brewed in New Zealand hops. Find the Thin Ice, please. Find the Thin Ice, yes. Oz, off you go. Work it out. Um, the glass is down here, Oz. Have a look. Down there. If you want to pour it with the brown face in the, the customer, Get pull it all the way down. Nice, gentle pulls. And keep pulling, that's it. Three and a half pulls should give you a full pint of beer. In Indeed, pint. roughly. You can see the uh, clearing up. Do you mind sharing with us this place? That's okay. <laughs> That's Thank your, you. No, that yours. Yeah. Time to show him how it's done. <laughs> Allow me. But try, try and give it a little bit more power. You know, we're, we're up north now. We're not uh, doing London pints. Exactly. Where, so... Stop being a soft southern pulse. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That is solid froth, James. <laughs> sure. Oh, taste the two. See which is better. Okay. I don't even get to James's pint. Quickly, <laughs> up more. more. <laughs> Which one was best? I, li Which? I do like more head on a boat, ah! though. So. Uh, anybody else, sir? That one. There's too many people behind this bar. Two minutes. That has got a lovely chocolatey quality. 
I mean, a really classic mild stuff. It's quite light in the mouth. It's, it's hard, the alcohol hardly it's shows at all. It's like, so much. Oh, charging the customers for beer and then drinking it yourself is probably considered bad form around here. Well, I've just, I've just tried it for you, and I think you really, I think this will be delicious. Very nice. Good choice, by the way. Like that. What have you? What have you actually sold? Five. Pounds. Yeah, but what? What was it? Beer. Yeah, but you have to say what it was on the tour. I've no idea. It was five quid worth. A slightly dark lager because I started on the wrong pump, and it's actually got some mild in the lager. What pump did you start on? I started on the mild, but it ended up in the lager pump. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. Well. I just got it wrong. Eventually, we give up and just give the money back. Sir. Anyone else? I think we're beginning to get the hang of this. Which one do you like? That one or that one? This one's hot, that one's cold. Which would you rather? The cold one, jolly good. Um, um, how much do you normally pay? <laughs> Oz Clark's tab is number 99, if anyone's interested. Oh, the thing is that I forgot after 25 years whatever it was since I last did it, is that working in a bar is actually pretty hard work. Quite nice, actually. You can talk to people, taste the beer with them. You're not actually supposed to do that. You're supposed to pull the pints and serve them and take the money and put it in the till. They just, they want our opinion, and I'm very happy to give it to them. You still going? Yep. Oh. oh. Our mission to find the beer that speaks for modern Britain is going extremely well. Our ability to speak about anything is less certain. The point about the pub is that you can come to a pub and behave in a way that you would not behave in your own house with people that you would not invite to your own house. Absolutely. Because what is it? What is a pub, actually? It's a public house. Public house. Now, do you want me to tell you why a public house is a public house? No. The thing that should be preserved about pubs is that they are a great social leveller. Because outside of the pub, you have, you know, ABC One Professional, all these things that marketing people go on about. But once you get into the pub, everybody is an equal. They are all equals in beer. You, you, you don't, well, no. Moments later, customers who've been waiting all night for a pint are disappointed. Sorry, gentlemen, time is up. Next morning, I take advantage of Ozzy's befuddled head and set him a beer facts challenge. I want to know about the history of lager in Britain, but you could take at least 45 minutes to explain it to me. So from this Easily. junction, I'm going to give you a mile. What? A mile? That's your challenge. You've got to do the history of lager in Britain in a mile, starting from here. Are you ready? Go. Why, James, stop it. Let's go. Uh, I'm, the term lager does not, not, not apply to a beer as such. It is a, it's a process. To lager a beer means to, to, to store it, OK? Ten for the mile. What? Ten for the mile. Keep Shut going. up. Just stop interrupting. I'm trying to concentrate. Um, uh, the lager beer, actually, is, is a style of beer. Um, it is not British. It was never part of the British phenomenon. It's astonishing that it's taken hold in this country to such an extent. But, however, how did lager get a foothold in this country? Well, well that's what we I asked. You've done play... three-tenths of a mile already. Oh, James, shut up. Go round about another six Thanks to the wretched traffic, this yeah, mile could James last a couple of hours. An advert, a television advert, could finally make people drink something they viscerally didn't want to drink. Now, think of this. I bet he drinks Carling Black Label. Got that? I'm wonderful, stuck. wonderful, funny campaigns. I'm, um, sick, I'm um, sitting here on the, 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 shush, 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 shush. Stop interrupting. Um, the beer that We're within spitting distance of the mile, and something tells me he's not going to make it. In other words, suddenly the off trade, everyone was taking beer away to drink at home. And of course, it's, if it's a big brand, people go into a, a, a place, Don't they say, I recognise that brand, I've seen it on television. It's not the same as a pint of lovely old fashioned beer in a pub. You actually have to go into, a, uh, into a, an off license and uh, stop, 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 what, 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 brought the idea of lager to Britain in the 60s and amalgamated several large breweries that he'd bought and started producing lager. Other breweries, scared of also being taken over by the evil Canadian whose name I've forgotten, decided that they would also amalgamate. That's how we ended up with the big six breweries. It was advertised to women, but later they used clever advertising to make it appear manly, and so it caught on and now everybody drinks it. That's point one of a mile. OK, Oz, we've talked about lager for 1.1 miles. It's time we just got on and tasted some. Oh, God, do we have to? 
Well, lager is one of Britain's most popular pints. The least we can do is try the stuff. I'll tell you what, we'll try it with our national dish. Da da! What? It's a curry. Oh! But which lager goes best with curry? Does it matter? Would we notice? Do we care? See, that tastes of nothing to me. Is there actually something in this tasting it on the burp, or is it just an excuse for being childish and burping? If you hang out with brewers, and ha <laughs> ha you are one, yeah. um, what they always say when you're tasting it, you can only judge the hop on the burp. Either it tastes of nothing, or my taste buds have expired. I think it tastes of pretty much nothing. So do I. Now let's see what difference it makes, adding a mouthful of the chicken tikka boona. Mmm. <laughs> You've been waiting for this, oh, haven't you? Oh, God, yes. Mm, that's really, really nice cudge. What's All right, that? let's have some of this stuff. That's this excellent. good Kentish, sorry, Indian beer. No, see, I think it tastes beery and quite dry. It only really works with a curry. I think you're sort of right. Not much flavour, cold, mm. fizzy, mm -hmm. not very alcoholic, whop it back, doesn't hurt. This is the eternal enigma. Lager makes you want a curry, curry makes you want a lager. We need to find a way out of this before we drink ourselves into a coma. Lam Vindaloo. Good luck. Ah! Ah! Oh! Ah! Are you going to vomit? No, I'm not. It's just very painful. Even so, despite all this, this properly brewed Far Eastern lager tastes, still tastes fruity and good, and yeah. like it should taste. Well, we've tried the oldest, the strongest, and the most expensive beers. We've Ooh, even tried right. lager. Where does, Where does that leave us? Yeah, no closer to finding the drink no, that speaks for modern it. Britain. So, it would be tempting to write this off as a disaster. Can we just reflect for a moment, though? On, once again, we've found one of those perfect male moments, really. The caravan is terrible. I mean, it is truly catastrophically awful and uncomfortable. The legs don't go down properly, the wheel fell off, the dolly wheel fell off, the door of the bog fell off, your bed collapsed, all the rest of it. That's awful. The weather, frankly, hasn't been great. You're annoying. But, sitting under this simple canvas shelter, with a curry, and a glass of beer, and a mate to talk to... An irritating mate. Things could be worse. Uh.